The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I'm Suno An from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I've been in the police force for 29 years. I didn't want to hear that I wasn't good at my job because I was a woman. So I hardened myself and worked extremely hard. Then I met the risen Jesus and came to embrace others with God's love. I'd like to share my testimony with you. My brother-in-law is a police officer, and he convinced me to join the force as well. I only thought of criminals as people who should be kept away from society. I hated them and thought that they should rightly be punished. So I pursued my cases incessantly and was known to be a tough investigator. Once, I was investigating a child sexual assault case, and it enraged me. In order to find evidence, I traveled back and forth from Chuncheon to Wonju three times in one day, even though the weather was blazing hot. When I was working on a missing persons case, where a child had gone missing five years ago, there was no substantial evidence, and all I had was a page-long missing persons report. I was still determined to find the child, and ultimately, I found him. Because I pursued my cases with everything I had until the criminal was caught, or the cases were resolved in other ways, my colleagues said that I was tough enough to make ghosts flee from me. When I was working at the financial crimes unit, I was always irritable because of the stress. You see a lot of intelligent and cunning people when you work on financial crimes cases. It broke my heart to see victims who had lost all of their hard-earned savings to scammers. I wanted to help them get their money back however I could, and tried my best to do so. But sometimes the perpetrator had spent it all for their own pleasures or other ways. Then they would be absolutely unrepentant about what they had done. That made me so angry that sometimes I imagined killing them in my mind. When there was a particularly difficult case to solve, it was all I could think about, even after work. Sometimes I would think about it all night. As I kept living like this, my emotions dried up, and I grew to hate people. This attitude made me irritable at work. Also, there were people who looked down on me because I was a woman, and there were colleagues who thought female cops weren't as good as male cops. I became obsessed with being good at my job so that I could prove them wrong. This obsession made things extremely stressful for me. One day, I got very painful blisters under my nails and went to the doctor. I was told that they were due to too much stress. That got me thinking, why do I have to live like this? As time went by, I was tired and having a hard time, but I was determined to solve all my cases and make the criminals pay. I steeled myself and conducted my investigations in a very tough way. People heard rumors about me and said they didn't want to be interrogated by me. People who were interrogated by me would be shaken up by how merciless I was. My dedication to my job earned me recognition and promotion, but I grew burdened and exhausted inside. Things got even busier at work when I was transferred to the sexual crimes unit, and I had no time to take care of my kids. I have two daughters. They were in elementary school at the time, and they envied the other kids for having moms who cooked delicious food for them. I always felt guilty for not being able to do things for my children. My eldest daughter is responsible and good-natured, so she was used to taking care of herself, but she was very cool-headed. One time, one of her friends lost her mother, and my daughter went to her memorial service. All of my daughter's other friends were comforting her friend and crying with her, but my daughter found herself unable to cry and felt lost as to how she could console her friend. It broke my heart to think that my daughter's sensibilities had dried up because I hadn't been there for her at a stage in her life where she needed someone to take care of her. My younger daughter was very sensitive and easily hurt. At the start of every school year, she was scared of going to school. She said that making new friends was hard for her. One day, she didn't come home, even after the evening study session was over. She wasn't at school and wasn't answering her phone, and I grew more and more worried. Then she came home at 11 at night and broke down crying as she told me that she hated going to school because the kids scared her and I was at a loss as to what to do. I met her teacher at school. 
I tried meeting with our friend's moms too. But the situation didn't improve, and my daughter was having a harder and harder time. That was when I finally remembered God. I knelt and wept for a long time as I prayed. I confessed that I would go back to church if he saved my daughter. I also began to have conversations with my daughter and receive help from people around us. Then, amazingly, my daughter began to find stability in her heart. Around that time, I met a lady from Hanmount Church who was a statement analyst where I worked. She introduced me to her church as she told me about her sister. Her sister was a professional soccer player, and after she met the risen Jesus, she was joyfully playing for the Lord while sharing the gospel. That was how I came to seek the church. I was praying in the sanctuary, and all I could do was cry. I felt like God was melting my heart with the love He was pouring into me. That was how I gave my first worship service. On the way back home, I didn't know why, but I was happy and thankful about everything. After I registered as a member at church, I had fellowship with another member about God's word. She asked me how I could believe in an invisible God. I couldn't answer her question because I took it for granted that God existed, and I just believed in Him. She told me that I was supposed to believe in God through a historical fact, the resurrection. Then she showed me a history and geography textbook, as she told me that out of all the holy figures in history, only Jesus had risen from the dead. I had majored in history as a university student. So I was curious as to why she was talking about something everyone already knew. Then she told me that the resurrection was a historical fact, and that a person could believe that Jesus is God through the sign of his resurrection. I had never heard something like that before, and it amazed me. Jesus, who was the Creator God, had come to this earth to die for my sins and be raised again. All according to the prophecies in the scriptures, Paul had submitted to Jesus because of the sign of Jonah, the resurrection, the sign shown to us as it was prophesied in the scriptures, on the way to Damascus, so that he could arrest people spreading the news about Jesus. Paul had met the risen Jesus, and after that, he had shared the gospel for the Lord till he even gave his life. The disciples had surrendered to Jesus, the Creator of God, only after they had met Him after He was raised. Realizing this was when I could finally believe what it said in Romans one, and who through the Spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God, in power by His resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. That was when I could see exactly just what I had done to God. I had become my own God. And claim that everything belonged to me, as I ignored him. Jesus had died and risen again because of this sin of mine. Jesus had died in my stead, while I had been an enemy of God. Then he had risen again so that I could believe in him. But I still hadn't believed in this Jesus as my Lord. I could clearly see that that was what I had done. That was when I realized what a great love the words of John three sixteen were. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Before the love of God, who had given up His Son for me, there was no way that I couldn't repent the sin of not believing in Jesus as my Lord. Then, I received Jesus as my Lord. Amen. Because I didn't believe in Jesus as my Lord, I became my own Lord and judge, murdering criminals in my heart. As I told myself that they should rightly be punished, it's true that criminals must be punished because they have broken the law. However, I had no right to judge them when we had all ignored God and rejected Jesus. We were all sinners deserving of hell. Only Jesus could be our judge. Amen. And He had risen again to become our Lord. Because I didn't believe in Jesus as Lord, my life was my own, and my children. My husband, my possessions—they were all mine. Everything in my life had been difficult because I was weary and burdened by thinking that these were all mine. However, after I repented and believed in Jesus as my Lord, I gave back to Him what was His. Then, my heart was at peace.
Before I believed in Jesus, I looked like a very cold person. One day, I was helping a civilian with a non-emergency situation, and he was surprised to find out that I was a police officer because I looked so friendly. This happened when all I had done was receive Jesus as my Lord. My colleagues used to tell me that I would even scare ghosts away, but now they tell me that I'm gentle and make others feel comfortable. After believing in the risen Jesus, everything around me seemed beautiful and new. One day, I saw an orchid blossom, and I immediately fell to my knees, thanking God for the beautiful flower with a joyful heart. As a merciless cop dealing with criminals all the time, I used to feel nothing when I saw a pretty flower. But now, I feel the love of God through such things as flowers, and it moves me very much. I won't ever forget the love I felt that day for as long as I live. There were many changes in my two daughters as well. My eldest used to have trouble connecting with her emotions. Now, she's become a joyful girl. She's met friends from church at our Taekwondo school and shares her heart with them. My younger daughter believed in Jesus as her Lord, and now she finds peace and comfort in her heart as we have family worship together. She's doing very well. Also, my heart towards criminals has changed. I used to only treat them like people who should be punished. They had become criminals because they didn't believe in Jesus as Lord and were the lords of themselves. But God was waiting for them with patience. When His love was poured into my heart, I felt mercy for them, and I began to pray for them and share the gospel with them. I'm currently working in the cyber crimes unit. I used to be so stressed out at the job that I had OCD symptoms and my health was suffering. But now that Jesus is my Lord, I no longer feel stressed. I'm healthy too. My colleagues ask me how I could be working so happily at a department that everyone tries to avoid. Then I tell them that it's because I believe in Jesus and that they could live like I do if they believe in Jesus too. This is how I share about there was in Jesus with them. One day, I was interrogating a young man for a sexual crime. I was thinking about how I should do the interrogation, and I thought that I should pray about it. After I prayed, I decided to do a thorough interrogation and went to see the young man. His appearance was shabby and humble, and he looked terrified. I felt sorry for him. I asked him why he had done what he did, and he told me that it was because he wanted attention. At that moment, tears came to my eyes. I realized that the only person who could save this young man was Jesus. God wanted to save oppressed and enslaved souls. When his love was poured into my heart, I saw this young man not just as a criminal, but a soul too. After the interrogation was over, I told him, You're the first perpetrator who's ever moved me to tears. I think God wants to save you. Don't you want a happy life? Then he answered yes. So I said, all you have to do is believe in Jesus. There's proof that you can believe in him. Your life will change when you believe in Jesus. Then the young man said, Really? I want to live like that. With a trembling voice, he told me that he hated and regretted what he had done. Later on, he heard the gospel, repented, and believed in Jesus. Amen. One time, I went to a psychiatric hospital to investigate a young man who hadn't paid for his alcohol. He was a severe alcoholic. When I met him, I saw his eyes crying out for help. I couldn't just leave after having seen that, so I shared the gospel with him. Then he told me that he had never known that the resurrection was proof that Jesus was God. He also said that he had never known that his Lord was supposed to be Jesus. He immediately said that he had been an alcoholic because he had been his own master, repented, and accepted Jesus as his Lord. Amen. Police officers deal with criminals all the time, and they come to believe that once someone commits a crime, he or she will commit another crime for sure. That's why they don't trust criminals. I also thought that way. Our church has members who have committed crimes in the past. I've dealt with a lot of gangsters and bar hostesses at crime scenes. Knowing what they're like, it wasn't easy to become one with people who had pasts like that. Police and criminals can't ever trust each other. But in Ephesians 3, it said that through the gospel, we were heirs together, members of one body, and partakers in the same promise. Through this passage, the prejudice that I couldn't get rid of before disappeared. 
when I came to realize through the gospel that the members of this church community were my brothers and sisters, I completely opened up my heart to these people. Now, we don't live as criminals and police officers. We love each other as brothers and sisters, united in Christ. When my heart was opened up to the church community, I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher. I immediately obeyed, since we were one body through the gospel. I've been serving the kids as a Sunday school teacher ever since, and I've been learning a lot through these kids. In Luke 15, it says that there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. In this way, God didn't look at people's outward appearances. He loved everyone. I used to think that only criminals were sinners and that they absolutely had to be punished. However, everyone who rejected God and lived as the lords of themselves were sinners. Jesus had died on a cross for people such as these, people like us. It was because He loves us, and His resurrection proved that His love is real. In the face of the grace that had saved a sinner like me, I saw that criminals were souls that had to be saved too. God made us His children, and now He wants all of His children saved. Because of His love, I will continue to share the gospel with everyone I meet. I was a hard-faced police officer who worked incessantly to pursue my cases because I didn't want people to say that being a woman made me bad at my job. But now I'm kind and gentle at work, sharing the gospel with criminals with God's love, who wants to save souls more precious than all of heaven and earth. I give glory and thanks to the Lord, who saved a sinner like me and made me a witness of the resurrection. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMU Only Jesus or Google us at HMU Only Jesus.